I'm Julian, I'm from the running company Geelong, and today I'm talking about the New Balance Supercomp Elite version 4. Today we're going to call it the SC, just for ease of use, because it's a bit of a mouthful, the uh, full name of this shoe. Now this replaces version 3, which has existed in the industry as New Balance's top-end racing shoe. Uh, we thought of version 3 as the every every person racing shoe. So it's a perfect shoe for someone who might have been out on the roads a little longer. It handled more of a rear foot strike. Uh, perhaps it wasn't so performance oriented, but it was very versatile within the racing shoe industry. So we, it was quite popular. Um, the version four is a little bit different and we see a few major upgrades that perhaps shifts its focus to be a more performance based racing shoe. All right, so a few little specs and features that we'll just bang through before we get into the real review. So firstly, midsole, Piba. 40 mil at the back, 36 mil at the front, four millimeter offset. Men's, it weighs 222 gram, size nine, and 176 gram, size seven female. Uh, Phantom Fit Upper um, comes in two different widths for men, D width and a wide 2E. Only super shoe on the market that comes in a 2E. In women's, it's B only. The shoe retails at $360. All right, so on to differences from version three. Now, the major difference, um, and it's the one that everyone's sort of been talking about and is interested in, is the different foam being used. So with version four here, we use full PBA midsole. Version three was always a PBA TPU blended foam. So it never really felt like it had that response that other super shoes had. It may be a little bit more generous and forgiving, type of foam, a softer, spongier foam, whereas this Piva is a little firmer and a little snappier. Piva gives us a little bit higher return sort of count in terms of energy return. So the shoe has a more performance edge to it. We can see that there's a quite aggressive toe spring. We notice the rocker, that's more exaggerated compared to version three as well. Big change it's through the upper of the shoe is the, the use of a, a phantom fit mesh. So previous version, version three, we saw more of a knitted upper, uh, especially around the tongue and around the collar. Whereas this new version, mesh upper, it's, it's a stronger type material, which means you'll feel more supported. The vamp area here is quite stiff. So we get a strong lockdown through the midfoot. Quite a big change in the heel collar. Version three was like a, a booty style with a bit of knitted fabric. A few customers, and myself included, had some irritation from that booty rubbing um, around the ankle area. This, this model gets rid of that booty and it should remove that issue for those customers that struggled. It's a relatively firm heel cut, pretty traditional. When we look inside the heel cut, there is no real tab like some of the other shoes that provide security. So some customers may feel some heel slip at the back compared to other shoes. There's no gusset or anything like that through the tongue area. If we have, can't really show you, but this tongue is like a thin felt material. So it's soft, but there could be the chance of the tongue slipping a little. Uh, but it probably provides a more adaptable type fit for different arch heights and different foot shapes. In terms of um, differences in aesthetics, you can really tell this shoe is a bit of like a it looks faster, um, you can see the aggressive toe spring, but what really draws the attention is all this skiving through the midsole. So it looks a little bit like the Adidas Adios Pro 3 in that it's not one big blob of foam that the upper sits on. This has actually gone through like a 3D modeling uh, process where the, the software has looked at the midsole and it's worked out all the areas that we could take foam apart away without affecting the stability or the performance of the shoe. So we're reducing weight where we don't need it. And it's just slight angles here and there, little bits of shaving, but it does make the shoe look pretty cool. Uh, feel, so how does the shoe differ from version three? To me, underfoot, it's a lot snappier, so it's firmer. When we look at the midsole geometry and how the um, shoe is shaped, through the forefoot, you can see sort of no real gap through the forefoot. It's a full, full contact 
um, outer sole. However, when we get back through midfoot and back, there's two distinct channels that we have through the rear foot. And this gives a very different feel when we load the shoe from the back to the front. Up front, we have a little bit less foam, but we don't have those channels to compress, so it's firmer, more responsive toe off. Whereas when we're landing through the rear foot, we sink into these channels a little more, making the shoe feel quite soft through the rear foot. Uh, the SC Elite version 3, I'll just grab it and show you, the, the channels went a lot further forward. So we saw a quite a distinct sort of difference in how that feels underfoot. Um, this feels firmer through the forefoot. Could be a combination of how the geometry of how the foam set up and also the density of the foam being PIBA, um, just the just the capability of the foam to return more energy versus this type foam, but this one here feels softer through the forefoot and firmer in the version four. What what was noticeable to me was this midfoot, um, the widening of the midfoot platform. So you can see the net of the shoe here has got broader. Now this feels really stable to me through the forefoot. The, I guess the, when we uh, look and assess a super shoe, it's it's easy to take a judgment off five minutes running in the shoe at a fast pace. But really, these shoes are designed for someone who's going to be out there a lot longer, running a half marathon, maybe running a full marathon at the back end of an Ironman. And stability plays a much bigger factor when we get to that point of the race. And so it's great that New Balance have accounted for that with this shoe. So this width through the forefoot here, to me, gave a really stable feel. I felt really confident when I was running downhill. Um, although, I do feel more softness through the, the back sort of corners of each shoe. I never felt like I was sinking too far where I felt like I was at risk of sort of any type of either ankle sprain or any of those stirrup tendons working too hard to stabilize the ankle. And that's in contrast to a lot of the super shoes out there where I do feel that um, at the back end of the marathon I would be struggling in that shoe, especially as I become more rear foot in my foot strike. So just as a little bit of a historical sort of take on this, this, this franchise, it started back in the day when New Balance first brought out the RC. So this was called the New Balance RC. Uh, it never really committed to being a super shoe. The stack heights were lower. It didn't feel like it had much rocker. It used the, the nice foam. I think it was the first time we saw fuel cell, um, but it never felt like you'd want to run a marathon in it. It had this amazing grip pattern. So if anyone remembers, this tread here is the best tread that I've ever felt on any shoe before. Um, so it's a shame that we don't see that going forward. But I still keep this in my rotation whenever I have a, a longer cross-country race or anywhere, any race where I need grip. Then New Balance dove into a higher stack, softer foam with the RC2. The shoe got a bit bouncier. It got spongier. But it didn't really feel like it got any faster here. Uh, this was sort of a, a, probably the uh, most comfortable, most jogging friendly of their franchise so far in, the, in the, um, their high-end race shoe. But for, for me, it, it didn't really hit the mark in terms of feeling like it was a proper race shoe. Super Comp Elite 3 is the people's shoe, we called it, the people's super shoe. It accommodated a lot of different foot shapes, uh, accommodated a lot of different foot strikes. So it was probably the best shoe that we had in the store for someone who was a strong rear foot striker. And most of us are really, like, especially towards the back end of a race. Um, you can see that the knitted sort of flexible upper I was talking about that suited some people, didn't suit others. This was a really soft, spongy shoe, so uh, perhaps like more of a, a faster long run shoe. It was around in my top three of shoes that I would want to race a marathon in, but it never really made it to the top. So with version 4, you can see New Balance have made a concerted effort to make the shoe faster. Now when I first saw that design and I saw like the philosophy or the angle they were heading, I really worried about how it would go for the everyday runner. And that's how I think when I think about shoes. Like it's all well and good for me to get out and do a workout in it and like the shoe, but how's it going to go in store for the majority of the population? Um, and so I took it on a run this morning and I purposely took it on some different terrain, different paces, went up and down hills, 
just to assess its suitability for, for different runners. Um, I started, I ran with different foot strikes. I ran up on my midfoot, my forefoot, and then I spent a bit of time rear foot striking as well just to sort of see how it would respond. And I'm pretty happy to say that although it is a little bit snappier, not quite as soft as version 3, it's still really generous and forgiving for all these different foot strikes out there and different runners' foot shapes as well. I was surprised at how wide it was through the forefoot. Like to me, it almost felt like a lightweight trainer type fit rather than a high-end race shoe, which it, again, gives me a lot of confidence in store because of the wide range of foot shapes that we have. Um, and for someone who's out there three hours and longer, I think your, your shoe should try to fit like a training shoe rather than a racing shoe. So much can happen to the foot over three hours that you almost want to find a forgiving toe box. You want to find a more comfortable fitting shoe rather than a faster feeling shoe. The other important component of this shoe to note is the carbon fiber plate that runs through the shoe. So it's called Energy Arc, New Balance call it that. It basically refers to the shape of their plate. Now the plate in the SC4 is the same as the one in the Supercomp Trainer version two, which is lighter than its predecessor. Uh, and it's sandwiched in the middle of two of these PIBA layers. So you do still get that stiffness within the shoe and you get the feeling of being propelled forward through the, the, the geometry of the plate. So here we have the New Balance Super Comp Elite 4. They're my first thoughts. Uh, if you have any more questions about this shoe, my experiences with it, um, any, any sort of technical questions, send them through. Happy to answer anybody. Um, for now, I'm gonna jump on the Treddy, test it out a little bit up there. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. And if you like this, we're gonna release more longer form videos so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or uh, our Instagram.